All right, we're here at BYR. You heard me talk about them. Adam Furlong, down in Air, Ontario. What's on tap today, Adam? Well, we're switching out uh, the stock skid here for uh, 129. Um, we can give it a complete service. We're gonna do some clutch work to it. We're gonna see if we can't get this thing going here. For Pretty Some muddy under there. I don't know how to clean the foam veil by the look of it. I think what we're going to do is we're going to get the skid out of this thing. And then uh, we'll start pulling the dry shaft out for the track change. Once that's all apart, we'll get the clutching out and uh, we'll go from there. And this guy knows his shit, so we are going to be done right. You'll notice that the arm motion mounting point, they're a lot different than the SE5, so we're going to have to do some fiddle faddle with that. you take those bolts all the way out so your axles all the way down. And as you can see on the back of the wheel, you can see your adjusters come right out so it gives you the most amount of slack. Oh back. yeah, nice. Yeah, so that's right back, yeah. right to the nut. Awesome. Yeah. Gives you the most slack so you can wiggle that skid out of there without any hesitation. Bye bye, SC5. And you're thinking the front holes might have to be changed too. Yeah, you can see there's quite a bit of difference there, about four inches. Pull your exhaust temp probe out, put it over the way somewhere nice as not going to get a rack. Size does matter, I guess. I've never taken a track out of an XP. Did the rev. The chain case is quite a bit different how that's in there. Of course, make sure you undo your uh, speedo sensor and then. tensioner works here. Take it up. It takes out the slack in your chain. On the old sleds you used to be able to just do it by hand. Now you gotta kind of do it by feel. Which is kind of tricky. Oh, which is hard with the ratchet because you get way more power, Absolutely, right? for sure. Yeah. yeah, so you'll see a lot of guys that are DIY. It's cool, but they'll uh, get this chain too tight and they'll peel off this uh, tensioner here, your runner. Um, as soon as that's gone, obviously you're down into the pin and your aluminum bracket and it's a real, real big issue, right? So just make sure when you're doing it, you gotta know what you're doing. That's why it's here. I mean, it's just a cam lever. It just pulls off. All your stuff's exposed. Pretty simple. Three bolts. Just added headaches, added stress to the job when you're haven't got the proper tools for the proper application. I've lost all my tools. <laughs> <laughs> it does happen. Generally, if this thing's been ridden any amount of time, you can see the bottom tab's kind of bent down below the floorboard. Oh yeah, yeah. So the floorboard's been bent, bent up, up a little yeah. bit. Covers all kind of bent, twisted yeah. up there. She's seen some love. <laughs> I like to have a look to make sure when I'm taking this off that the bottom of the tunnel's not actually bent up into my rotor. Um, I do that now so that I know if I need more parts when I go to put this thing back together, I can get the parts, slam it back together, and off we go. Done to the time or two, so I've had to modify up a Allen key here to make sure she's going to work for us. I was saying having the right tools saves tons of time, right? Big time, yeah, for sure. Brake pin comes out. Yeah, awesome. So again, I look at this stuff and just, this one's a little dirty, but it's kind of par for the course for the sled here today. So, and then I just go in there with a screwdriver, make sure 
sure my parking brake's off. Start pulling them out again. Have a look at all my components. Yeah, so you can see here, you got uh, you got a nice groove in here. This yep. is your wear indicator. Um, so as your pads get uh, start to get worn down, here's the backing of the pad. As it starts getting down, you know, um, I usually typically like to change mine out at about 25%, just for the fact that uh, brakes are cheap. Um, you're in there, you might as well do it. But these ones here, they seem to be in good shape, so I'd say we're uh, we're good to rock. Right on. So we're taking the snap ring that holds the brake in here off, slides out of the channel. Again, you're gonna want to make sure. So we got a little bit of bend on there. No big deal. We'll get that straightened out. So the next step in this process is in behind the uh, the rotor here. You can see there's four studs. Yeah. Um, that's what's actually keeping the the two pieces together. Yep. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wheel those out, and then uh, we're gonna just slip this thing off here. So you're gonna want to have your uh, your disc in the proper spot here. You can see there's four cutouts. I mean, once you get the first one lined up, you know, that's where all four of your bolts are coming out. It gives you that yeah. space. Again, this is where proper tools come into play. Um, once you start stripping those uh, T40s out, this, uh, this job becomes an all day process. It's really frustrating. gone ahead here and uh, we've removed the, uh, the four bolts. We got everything apart here. Um, brakes just gonna come out of here. Unfortunately, the bearings come right off the shaft. Usually they, uh, they come off as a nice hand tightened piece. This one's seen some miles. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely giving us some issues. Leading down the brakes. Snap rings out. Gears off. You can see it's beveled on one side, so when you go put it back in, oh, yeah. bevel to the bearing. I'm gonna hoist this up and get that shaft out of there. Right on. Well, that was an easy task. So that was pretty easy this go around because uh, obviously all of our brakes and everything are out of here. A little bit tougher with, uh, with the caliper and stuff on there, but it's all the same, the same idea. Out to the left, drop it down, pull it out to the right, slide it on up. Um, oh, perfect. So everything on the back side here is a little bit different, so I'll have to do some measuring and figure out where we're going to put those brackets. Man, it's quite a bit longer. It's awesome. Yeah. Again, I'm gonna put this on there. I wanna make sure that our holes are in the right spot. I'm gonna put the bolts in there to tighten that up. I like to just put in a couple. Start them. Pull it in nice and easy. Make sure we're getting an even pull on it. Again, like I said, normally you wouldn't take this caliper right off here. Um, bearing usually slips out, but that bearing was uh, past its prime. It was stuck in there when we didn't pull it off. So Mr. Porter got a new bearing assembly and some uh, rebuild of the caliper here today. So you can see that that's pulling nice and uh, nice and square, top and bottom. Um, if you really want to get into it, you can put all four in and tighten them down evenly, but uh, I've found in the past that that doesn't really uh, help us any, any, any more uh, to get this straight. Do your due diligence, make sure you're doing these things nice and even, get them kind of pulled in nice and uh, nice and square. Once they're square, you're home free. Put the other two in now with new bearing and stuff in this. Uh, on this shaft, you just like to have the hand feel, just to make sure that we're not gonna be binding anything up. Again, using impact, it's pretty quick. Um, you don't see exactly what's happening when you're going across here. Always good practice to uh, take things in nice and slow if you're doing it yourself and you've never done it before. Keep an eye on things, listen to what the tunnel's telling you. 
you start in there and you start hearing the cracks and the bangs and the pops, something's wrong, just stop. Have another look at it, see what's up. That's that, man. Brakes are on. We're gonna slide these back in. I've opened the caliper right up. Makes it for, uh, makes it easy to drop your pads in. When you're dropping it in, I don't know if you can really see that there, Gary, but in? at yeah. the back there, there's a there's a saddle for these that they sit in. Just drop them in, roll them up. Perfect. Off you go. Put your pin in there. Again, not likely that you'd be doing that. Um, pretty extreme case here. I don't know when the last time this thing was apart or if it's ever been apart, but just make sure you're doing all this stuff in the exact same sequence. Just reverse of when you took it apart. The better is just to bring it to BYR and yeah, let the professional do it. Yeah, we'll help you out. <laughs> What's your time worth? You don't have really. to, uh, you don't don't have have to worry the... about running into little problems yeah. here and there. Should put new uh, crush washers in there when you're doing that, just so you don't have any leaks or anything like that. Great. This thing's gonna be like a new machine. back over a caliper here. It's a pretty crucial piece to have in there. There's two reasons for this thing. I mean, uh, one reason is, main reason is your belt guard. It clips into that. And the second thing is that, uh, you know, you have a belt that comes apart. You don't want to be taking out your brakes at the same time. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get on the other side, put the chain case back together, slide this skid in, and down the trail. Down the trail. That easy. Just like that, man. Make sure when you're putting this on, like we've talked about before, bottom gear, the bevels on the inside, top gear, make sure that spacer's in there. We're going to keep at it here. We're going to get our snap ring on. We're going to get our chain, chain tensioned up. And we'll be back. Turn this on. Give it a little twist. And if you remember, it just slides in on the post, so yep. push it up, slide it on top, make sure it's set, and get some Loctite here for this top bolt. Okay, chain tension, nice finger tight, right? Same as before, now we can see it, it's got nice tension on it, everything's good. Top bolt, uh, I've had a lot of experience with a lot of guys, over torque that top bolt, it pops off, drops in the chain case, just be careful when you're torquing that down. I don't mind getting in there with the impact. Again. And then when I go do my final, set your parking brake. Set your torque. Top bolt. Torque it down. Awesome. It would take me a week at home to do this. Plug in your speedo meter. Careful when you're tightening these bolts. Um, these top ones aren't too bad. You can put a nut bolt system through it. The bottom ones, if you strip it out, um, it's more of a pain. You can oversize it. But, uh, just be careful doing that, especially on an older sled. The chain case is a little bit weaker. It's got some miles. It's been through the heat. It, uh, it typically strips out a little bit quicker than some of the newer, newer stuff. That little time saving trick I showed you there when yeah. we took everything apart. I just clean up the rubber, make sure it's in good shape, put it back in the hole. How much gear oil does it take? Typically you're putting in there 250 mil. Um, so, I mean, we're right on the bang there, right on the mark, put in 250. I don't mind adding just a touch, just to make sure we got a little extra in there. Um, if you're running a four stroke, Different story, you gotta add more oil to it. There was an update, a TST that came up from BRP about uh, adding more oil. Again, talk to your certified dealer or a guy that knows what he's doing. 
In order to get the mounting points right for the new R-Motion suspension, you can download this template. Use this template at your own risk. You always need to double check the measurements. We are not responsible for anything you do to your own snowmobile. It's at your own risk and your own discretion. This is simply a guideline. I take no responsibility in anything you do with your sled. But this is the way I did it. You download the template, print it out at 100% scale. Do not shrink to fit in the printer settings. And then just double check the dimensions here, like so, to make sure that the scale is correct. Once you've determined that, we can cut out the template. You'll notice there's a clutch side and a throttle side. Just make sure you're using the right side. Once you remove the Rev XP skid, drill out the two rivets holding in the back plate behind the tunnel. Remove that back plate and set it up on top of this template also to double check your, your dimensions. And then what I do is I actually cut out the, the Rev XP holes. It doesn't have to be fancy. And then you simply just line that up to the holes that are on the tunnel for the Rev XP mount and then take a center punch and punch to mark the new holes before you drill. Or you can poke holes in it and use a sharpie to actually mark the tunnel before drilling. Give this template a try. It worked for us. Hopefully it'll work for you. But again, double check all your dimensions and the placement of the R-Motion skid before you drill anything into your tunnel. Awesome. Look at you, eh? You got a good chance. Oh, 
Oh, this is going to be fucking awesome. I can't wait. Nice. What's your tips for uh, tensioning tracks? When they're brand new, I like to snug them up just a little bit extra, just for the fact that they are going to stretch on my cuff. But uh, make sure you got, uh, I like to make sure we got you know, a nice, decent amount of down pressure. Get a couple fingers in there. That's good, man. That'll, that'll be good. Just a little bit, and then match the other side. Then give it a spin and just make sure it's running, running the same on the on both sides of the slider so that your tracks run together. Yeah. You want to make sure that this gap here on this side and the gap on the other side are relatively the same so it's running true yeah. instead of off. Make sure when you put your sensor in when it's tightened up, you want this elbow to be straight up and down. It's just what BRP recommends for picking up the best temperature. Just like that.